Y'all, Dixie here. It's a good night for another story time. This time I want to tell you about one of the funniest misunderstandings I ever witnessed on trail. And this one is centered around my friend Perk. For those of y'all who have been around the channel for a while, you'll remember that I met my friend Perk while through hiking the Appalachian Trail. And then we decided to start and we actually finished the Pacific Crest Trail and the Continental Divide Trail together. So for the story. My friend Perk and several other of my family members and myself were camped out near a beauty spot along the trail in Tennessee. We were all sitting around the fire that evening preparing our dinners because we wanted to go on and have dinner so that we could go and watch the sunset from a nice clearing in the area. But Perk had made dinner for two that night because you see he had this budding trail mance going with a girl he had met along the way and she was set to get into the same camp that night, but she was a slower hiker, so being as considerate as Perk is, he decided to make dinner for her as well. The sun was sinking pretty low and sunset was growing near, so all of us started walking over to where we could get a good view of it. And as we were doing that, Perk said, you know, I'm kind of worried about my lady friend. I'm gonna go southbound on the trail a little ways and just check on her, look out for her, and maybe offer to carry her pack back to camp for her. So we wished him good luck. We went to go watch the sunset. And as Perk was leaving, he grabbed up a rock, as he often did when he was going down the trail, just in case he saw a grouse, because Perk had this kind of fantasy of roasting a grouse over the fire and eating a grouse on trail. He had caught crawfish before, so why not a grouse now? So he set off his way, we set off our way. A couple hours after dark or so, we were all sitting around the fire and we heard this rustling as if somebody was walking towards us, but we didn't see a headlamp. And then Perk appeared. He apologized for startling us and said he didn't take his headlamp because he really didn't think that he would be gone that long. And since it was still light out, he hadn't thought of it. But unfortunately, he did not find his friend and he hoped she was okay, but he had walked back two or three miles or so, never spotted her, so figured she decided to camp sooner and didn't quite make it as far as she had hoped to. So although Perk was kind of bummed and hung his head because he ended up eating a double portion of dinner for one, we did have a good night hanging by the fire and the next morning we all enjoyed one another's company, made coffee on the fire and kind of had a late start to the morning. About lunchtime, we got really lucky with some trail magic near a road crossing. So all of us hikers were piled up, my family members, there were other hikers that we didn't know, some we did know. And we were all just kind of sitting around chit-chatting about our trail experiences. Well, there were these two guys that just looked really tired. They were kind of falling asleep, trying to nap, and they were complaining about how they didn't get much rest the night before. So somebody asked them, well, how come y'all didn't get much sleep? And they said, well, to be honest, we were kind of freaked out all night long. And we said, well, what was it, bears around your camp or something? And they said, no, it was actually creepier than bears. There was this guy who walked up in the dark with no pack on, no headlamp, and he was carrying this big rock in his hand asking us if we had seen this particular girl by a certain trail name and a particular description. And uh, we were just worried what might happen to us if we went to sleep that night. And Perk, who was sitting right next to me, chimed up and said, uh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> And these dudes were like, what, bro, why? And then, you know, things started getting hashed out and the story started coming to light. So these guys had gotten absolutely no sleep. They had been spreading these rumors of this random creeper on trail who was hunting down a girl with this rock in his hand. And so it's easy to see how quickly things can get distorted and rumors can be spread on the trail. And you know, how in the dark things as even harmless as Perk can somehow be creepy. But it was just very comical to see both sides of the situation and kind of the aha moment as everybody realized what had happened. Because here Perk was going to help this girl and to offer to carry her pack and ended up creeping out these two dudes who didn't get any sleep that night. This is one that I will definitely include in my book 
when I finally complete a book about my through hiking experience on the Appalachian Trail. But many of y'all on this channel have gotten to know Perk, have become fond of him through our travels together, and you've asked for a Perk update. So I felt like this would be a good opportunity to let y'all know that Perk is doing very well. He's living in New Mexico with his fiance. They got engaged on Mount Elbert, actually just a couple of weeks, I believe, after I summited Mount Elbert. And they're set to be married sometime later this year. And Perk is currently going to school. And he says, although he's doing very well, he does miss hiking a whole lot. And is hoping to maybe get back out there one day. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you tonight. If you have any stories of funny miscommunications on the trail that you would like to share in the comments below, I would love to read those. Thank y'all so much for watching, and we'll see y'all next time.